Hi everyone, it's James with Cowboy Cricket Farms, and we're going to do something today that we haven't done in a while, a Q&A session. So, I've got a whole bunch of questions that you've been asking over the last couple months, and uh, I've tried to answer most of these online. Some of them have come in via email, but they're here to share with everyone, so everyone knows kind of what's going on, and hopefully we can get a few people's questions answered. So, let's get started. Charles writes, Hi. Thank you for the useful information. I just have an off-topic question about raising crickets. I would really, really appreciate it if you provided me with some guidance. For some reason, there's a big difference in the sizes of my crickets even when they're the same age. For example, some of my three-week-old crickets are about half inch and some are about a quarter inch. Is this common? If so, how would you sort out the sizes of the crickets when you sell them to customers who request them in specific sizes? Thanks. Well, Charles, uh, this is actually really common. So insects have a huge amount of genetic variation. And just like people where, you know, a kid can be a whole different size than another kid who's the exact same age, uh, you know, crickets grow a little bit differently. This is especially true when they're young. The closer and closer they get to maturity, the kind of more even it tends to be. What I would suggest doing is making sure that your age ranges for each one of these batches of crickets is about the same. Don't let them breed for too long and put several days worth of breeding into one bin because then you'll have crickets that are potentially several days apart and when their whole lifespan is only seven weeks, that's a lot. Zipify writes, You said in an early video that you were redesigning the cricket growing boxes. Have you managed to do that yet? Good to see you making vids again. I am super happy to be making videos again as well. It's been so long. We've just been super insane here Really, thank you so much to everyone who is helping to support this channel as well as uh, Cowboy Crickets in general. On that note, right now, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, make sure that you see our weekly videos. We've got some really, really interesting content coming out soon. Gonna really open things up, not just in the cricket world, but also what we're doing in business. So, to answer your question though, honestly, we've had to put it on the back burner a few times. We are still working on it. There is more progress and I'll probably have a video about that here in the next uh, two months or so, uh, kind of showing where our prototype is right now. Um, we've just been so busy sending out product and bringing on farms. We can only do so many things at once. We're a super small team. We have hired on two part-time folks though. One is uh, one of our partners in the business actually. Uh, his name's Cree, he's a graphic designer. Other one, her name is Sarah. She comes in and just kind of helps out around. So they've been helping us to increase our productivity quite a bit, but we're still short-staffed. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to hire some more people here pretty soon. Um, but you know, we wait, we wait until it hurts because I don't want to be wasting money when we don't have to. We want to make sure we run this ship as efficiently as possible. Next question comes from Dan Baxter. I am not a cricket farmer, at least yet. I have been seriously thinking about starting primarily because of your videos. Thanks, Dan. Would I need to be established for any certain amount of time prior to becoming an affiliate? Hey, Dan, thank you so much for writing in. And no, absolutely not. Uh, <clears throat> we have farmers who come in who have uh, taken it upon themselves to create their own farms and they already know exactly what they're doing. We have a lot of farmers who come in and they do not know what they're doing. And so they go through our class and we give them a lot of mentorship. On that note, video coming out very soon, five cricket farming mistakes. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. It's super important. We've seen a lot of issues with farmers out there, both ours and others, that simply aren't doing things right. And you know, I, I think there's just a few things we can correct really easily. So if you wanna find a list of requirements to be one of our farmers, you can find that right on our website. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, that link might be changing though, because we do have a new website launching here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll try to update that. Ramiro6501 writes, Hi James. Hi. Greetings from Monterey, Mexico. I'm starting a farm soon and I have the exact same bin, but I was wondering how many crickets can you put in there before they eat each other or suffocate? So a lot of people ask this question and there's just so many different setups and variations to consider. It's really difficult to say one single answer. Here's how many. But through our testing, we've found that it's about two square centimeters per adult cricket is what you need to factor in there. The larger your bin gets, the smaller you can actually get that space since they have more sh common and shared areas. Uh, but still, 
around two square centimeters or more and you'll be fine. Uh, as far as suffocation, you just need to make sure that there's some kind of airflow. They don't need a whole lot of airflow, but for humidity and other things, you, you definitely want good airflow. Yellow Baron X. Hi James, I was wondering if it would be possible to get a rough idea of breeding growth if I started with, say, a thousand crickets, for easy math, how many babies should they make roughly? Thank you. So for this, we're gonna need a little bit of math. So let's set some guidelines here. First off, average female can lay about 14 eggs per day, uh, depending on the species and how you feed them, everything else that can vary quite a bit. Uh, many farms are only getting seven to 10. Uh, average in the industry is around 11 and uh, so that was a quick message from Kathy on LinkedIn, and uh, this is what she sent me. And uh, our logo is right there. Super excited to see this happening. Um, and interestingly enough, we're right next to the Costa Rica Insect Company. So there's at least one other bug company going to this. This will be at in The Hague, Netherlands, uh, next week. So, cool stuff. Getting back to your question, Yellow Baron X. Uh, so... We're gonna go with 14 eggs per day, 1,000 crickets. Let's say half of them are female. So let's say half of them are female. That means that those 500 crickets are laying 7,000 eggs per day. If you breed them for one week maintaining that, and again, these are just a lot of ballpark numbers, okay? You're gonna get about 49,000 eggs. But let's round down to 45,000 just to be safe. If 50% of those eggs live, again, being pessimistic, that gives us 22,500 eggs from the original 1,000 crickets. So it's a pretty steep growth curve. It is extremely uh, steep exponential growth. Uh, you can raise a lot of crickets very quickly. However, if you don't treat them right, you're not gonna raise anything. The fact is they're living animals and they need to be cared for. If you wanna find out how to care for your crickets, make sure that you check out our other videos on how to farm crickets on this exact same channel. We take you step by step through the entire life cycle and of course update them every now and then with Q&A videos like this. Moving on, Julio Acosta Nieto asks, can you raise crickets on fruits and leaves? Yes. So you absolutely can. They love uh, all sorts of fruits and vegetables, especially carrots, cucumbers, uh, what else? Apples. Apples are fantastic for pinheads especially. Um, and what you feed them changes what they taste like quite a bit. So experiment and, and try it out. But ultimately, yes, you would want to feed them fresh fruits and vegetables if possible. It can be really tough though on a commercial scale because that stuff rots and that's why we use the dry feed. Otherwise, we'd be using fresh fruits and vegetables. Alex asks, did you have to get any kind of certification to sell insects as food for human consumption? So, not exactly. You see, we are registered with the FDA. We're licensed by the state of Montana and Gallatin County for our food licensing. And that's how most food manufacturers are, by the way. The, this whole thing about like licensed by the FDA, that's not really a thing for food. You're registered with the FDA. Your facility is registered, rather. But the actual licensing that comes from the states so our licensing is from montana we're in montana uh, gallatin county is the one who actually does our inspections the fda could absolutely come in here though and inspect us and make sure that you know we're up to par i'm gonna save the rest of this for another video i think this could warrant its own entire video on just what the heck is happening in the edible insect industry with regulation because it's pretty murky out there and we are working on fixing that. Axorexis? I think that's how it's how it is. Either way, James, really enjoyed your series on how to farm crickets. Nice job. Thanks. In the cleanup process, why not use a dishwasher or and or washing machine? It's cleaner, sanitizes or sterilized, and does a pretty good job of drying too. You mentioned it's a good workout for your forearm, LOL. But as you know, hands-on labor is expensive. And that is true. We are working on finding different ways to water uh, the crickets. And we're going to make an update video actually about how to better water crickets as well and some of the other watering technologies that are out there. But the sponges have some big benefits. Mostly they're relatively affordable, they're easy to get, 
and they're edible. Now, the crickets don't really eat the sponges per se, but as they get in there and get the water, little tiny, little tiny bites. So it can be really, really detrimental if you use the wrong type of sponge. Using these sponges is important. The real reason though why we don't use the dishwasher is because most people use their dishwashers for dishes. And that means that there's soap in there, and detergent. And detergent will destroy a colony. It will kill the crickets. They're remarkably tough when it comes to bleach, but not so much for soap. So using a cleaner like that could be really dangerous. Uh, and it clogs up the machine really quickly. And now you not only have your crickets dying, but you also have a machine which costs at least several hundred dollars either being broken or needing to get serviced. So it's just not a good fit. Parisia Peters asks, who eats crickets? Parissa? Parisa. I'm not sure what your name is, but thank you so much for the comment. And, uh, you know, about 80% of the world eats insects in some form. We're kind of the weird ones that don't. And I think this is another great video idea. So, man, you guys are just killing it on these video ideas. Uh, on that note, down in the comments, let me know what other videos would you like to see? What have we not talked about yet? Uh, what have I been vague about or that you just need more information? Let me know and we'll create the content that you need. Laszlo Monziger asks, crickets have any parasites? Uh, so here's the thing, all living animals have parasites, right? That's the reason why we don't just like chop the leg off of a cow and just start eating it, okay? You don't wanna do that. What we do want to do is make sure we have the cleanest, safest animals possible so that you get the best nutrition, but also process them in the proper way. That's why we do the dehydration the way we do. We keep our facilities under strict sanitary conditions in order to make sure that they are as clean as possible, as safe as possible, and that you get the best food possible. So I have tons more questions out there, but I'm gonna save that for another video. We'll do another Q&A video here shortly, uh, maybe in the next uh, few weeks, and just keep hitting it. So in the meantime, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, get this thing out to the world. Make sure that people know Cowboy Cricket Farms is here to feed them. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now. Thank you very much. Thank you for all that support that you always give us. Thank you for viewing this. And until next time, stay chirpy, my friends. Bye. Final thought. What do you think about my new background here? And do you like this one better?